work uh, on land issues and also issues of um, biofuels primarily. So we've already heard quite a bit about Palmer, so I don't want to go into, into some of the issues uh, too much. Um, according to the United Nations, Palmer is the, is the primary driver for uh, tropical deforestation in Southeast Asia. Um, many species are, are endangered by it. Um, Palm oil is also uh, threatening local communities and forest people because their land is being taken away by some of the big palm oil uh, companies. And the third point we've already heard, uh, palm oil expansion also contributes to climate change because uh, when the forest is cleared, large amounts of CO2 are being uh, emitted into the atmosphere uh, immediately. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, more later. Okay. Next slide, yeah, just go on. So, at the moment, the majority of palm oil is used in foods and to some extent in cosmetics. But the use of palm oil in biofuels is, is the fastest growing new demand for palm oil. Um, so, in response to European biofuel targets, Indonesia uh, thought a massive, you know, they were seeing a massive new market for palm oil. So they've earmarked it a further 20 million hectares for palm oil expansion. Um, and Indonesia is already the third biggest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world, which is fairly surprising given that Indonesia doesn't have a lot of industry. But the uh, greenhouse gas emissions are obviously from, coming from the deforestation. Um, so can I have the next one? <laughs> uh, so this slide just shows you a little bit of the, the breathtaking expansion of palm oil. So this column shows you total area, uh, hectares of palm oil. In 85, only 600,000. In 99, already 3 million, 5 million, 6 million in 2006. And now estimates for uh, for 25, uh, 25 are 26 million potentially, um, according to existing plans of areas that have already been earmarked for palm oil expansion. And I just want to make the the point that the problem with palm oil is not growing palm oil as such; it's the expansion of palm oil. It's the the the, the rapid expansion of this area, which means forest has to be cleared to make way for new plantations. If you just grow palm oil as such, it's, it's no more damaging than any other crop. It's the expansion that's, that's a problem. And, and this is very kind of clearly showing how rapidly it, it's happening. Can you have the, the next one? So Simidar, we have, we've already heard, is, is the world's largest uh, palm oil producer. They're a Malaysian company. They've got a, a, a so plantations in Malaysia, a, a, a number of or large amounts of, of plantations in Indonesia, but now they're also expanding across the world. So they're going into other countries as well, uh, tropical countries where they can grow palm oil. So Africa is one of the new sort of frontiers for palm oil expansion. And one of the areas that we've been looking at, uh, one country is, is Liberia, uh, where Simidabe is, is uh, expanding at the moment. And they're accused of human rights uh, violations and uh, deforestation. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit, about, a bit more about Liberia. So, if we have the next slide. So, they've already grabbed 300,000 hectares of land in a deal with the Liberian government. And um, they began planting palm oil in, in 2011 already. There's very strong opposition from local communities. They've published declarations saying that they haven't been consulted by the government, their land has just been given away by the government. Um, and uh, you know, they are saying, we are the owners of this land, we've always lived on this land. Obviously they haven't got a contract, to, they haven't got a written contract to show it, but these are communities who have lived on this land for hundreds or thousands of years. Um, and despite commitments uh, by Simidame, they haven't engaged with uh, free, prior, and informed consent, which is sort of uh, the basic human rights standards when you talk about land deals. And in, in March of this year, Simidame began clearing land um, 
in, in, in Gulili town, which is the traditional area of, of this clan, uh, without negotiations. So we're just going to have the next one. Um, and, and a report from last year found that farmland is being swallowed up by the plantations. There's few alternative livelihoods uh, available for the, for the local people who used to grow uh, uh, the crops on this land. There has been no compensation has been paid to the communities. And uh, also forest areas that were used for cultural practices have been destroyed and planted with palm oil. And uh, Reading University did, a, did an impact assessment um, on this plant expansion and they were saying the, the land clearance uh, you know, would, would lead to large areas of forest being destroyed, uh, reduction of carbon storage and biodiversity loss, uh, risk of loss of livelihoods and food insecurity and increased risk of conflict. And there have been a number of uh, human rights violations um, being recorded, so there's no protection of the community's land rights uh, because, as I say, they haven't got a, a written contract uh, to show that they've always lived on this land. There's no guarantee for free, prior, and informed consent. Um, they've allowed involuntary re resettlement of the communities, and, uh, and uh, food, food security is being degraded because land is taken away from food production. So this is just a picture to show um, of an area that's, that's inside a Simadabi's concession, but at the moment this is still growing with the um, traditional agriculture, which is very much in tune uh, with the forest, so only clearing small amounts of, of forest, uh, growing crops, but uh, letting the, the forest stand on the whole. But if you compare that with the next picture, which is basically what uh, uh, you know, uh, how my plantations look after clearing the, the forest is, is uh, taken away. There's a few trees left standing, but otherwise um, it, it's all just industrial palm oil plantations. This is not a picture from uh, Liberia, this is from Indonesia, but it's, it's the same um, story, essentially. Um, what's interesting to know is Simidabe is actually backed financially by uh, a, a lot of European uh, financial institutions, uh, including HSBC, Deutsche Bank from Germany, uh, Schroeder's Investment, the Norwegian Government Pension Funds, Legal and General from the UK, and, and a long list of others. So this is one of the targets of, of our campaign, is actually to get these financial backers to stop putting money into Sibidami, Sibidami and essentially paying them for uh, deforestation. So I just want to talk a little bit about biofuels and, and the use of palm oil as a biofuel. <coughs> because biofuels are only being sold as something that's good for the climate. There's still this idea that if you use biofuels, it's carbon neutral, you're doing something positive, you're reducing emissions. And, and that's partly what we hear about the use of, of biofuels in power stations as well. And in fact, the use of biofuels in power stations is being, being subsidized as renewable energy by the, by the government. <coughs> However, the reality looks quite different because um, there are, as, as Duncan already mentioned uh, before, there are massive amounts of greenhouse gas emissions involved in, in palm oil. And these are primarily from the so-called land use change. So what that means is basically deforestation, um, forest being uh, cleared, being burned, uh, the carbon stored in the, in the forest is being re released into the atmosphere, and you have these massive greenhouse gas emissions up front. And there have been a, a number of studies into this, and, and uh, some, you know, they come to sl slightly different uh, uh, numbers, but these are figures from the European Union. So these are the European Union's own figures, their, their own research. This was published in The Guardian. What this shows is basically it's, it's comparing the carbon footprints of different types of biofuels with fossil fuels. Now the dark green here, this is crude oil, so this is uh, conventional fossil fuel, and this is oil from tar sands. And this column here is biofuel from palm oil, which essentially comes out more or less the same as, as uh, fossil fuel from tar sand. So really 
horrendous uh, climate impact from, from burning palm oil as a biofuel. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, of our campaign, um, we basically want the end of use of crops uh, like palm oil, uh, but also other crops who, who come out similarly bad for biofuels. And we want financial institutions to, to end their financing of these land grabs like the one we've seen from the Simidari. Similar things going on with, you know, obviously other uh, companies are, are doing similar large scale land grabs in, in Africa and other countries. So that's sort of mostly what I you know, wanted to talk about in, in this context. Um, so shall we move on to the, uh, to the air quality? Yeah. Right, so yeah. do you want to do questions now? Fine. Are you ready? <coughs>